welcome to uh, this preview, uh, pre pre look into the ch changes coming in ASCE uh, seven sixteen. Uh, this is my second time around the wheel uh, as TCA chair, uh, so I've have a, had a chance to uh, uh, to be part of this process now for two cycles, um, and uh, as such, I, it, it's uh, now incumbent upon me to uh, be able to explain everything that's going on in, in Chapter 13, and uh, I can't uh, fob it off to my predecessors anymore. Uh, so with that uh, introductory statement, um, I also am going to be covering uh, Chapter 15, uh, which is uh, uh, the chapter that uh, deals with non-building structures. The chair of that task committee is Greg Souls, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Greg uh, uh, has prepared all of the material I'm going to be showing you today. Uh, so I'll start with acknowledgments and uh, kudos to Greg uh, for the work that they put into uh, improving the non-building uh, provisions in uh, ASC 7. Um, I also need to acknowledge uh, Bob Bachman, who uh, has been uh, my mentor in this arena and uh, has made sure that I stay on the straight and narrow. Uh, Marion Phipps uh, provided me with some of the pictures that you'll be seeing and uh, uh, is very active in the non-structural world. Uh, you may even know her firm, so uh, thanks to her as well. Okay, uh, we're going to be starting with the uh, uh, Chapter 13, as I said. Um, and uh, our basic uh, approach uh, to covering this is going to be uh, to, uh, to look at the changes that have occurred uh, since 710, but I always like to start with a little background to the non-structural provisions. Uh, uh, from my perspective anyway, the attention on non-structural in the, in the building world uh, started with uh, some early events that informed engineers that we need to pay attention to uh, things other than the main building structure. Um, the 1933 Long Beach earthquake uh, resulted in damage to schools. A lot of that was the genesis of uh, the um, requirements that we currently have in the state of California for uh, school construction as, uh, as well as hospital construction. And uh, uh, parapets were the first thing that people focused on that were not specifically uh, related to the structure itself, but that could cause a lot of injury uh, to people either in the street or people trying to get out of the building. Uh, this is parapet damage from 2011, the uh, earthquake, the second earthquake in Christchurch, which uh, pretty much destroyed the downtown uh, central business district. And uh, there was a lot of this. Uh, and these were buildings uh, that for the most part had been addressed uh, from a seismic standpoint in one fashion or another, but obviously the attempts to stabilize the parapets were unsuccessful in many cases, uh, as you can see here. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the type of wall construction they were using in uh, Christchurch uh, at the turn of the century when these buildings were put up. Uh, it's a cavity wall construction with an outside wife and then an air gap and then an inside wife, the brick. And, uh, anchors didn't have much to hang on to. Uh, moving forward in time, uh, these are photos out of the 2009 uh, NERP provisions, and I'm guessing that a lot of these photos came from uh, 1994 Northridge. Uh, the concern has shifted to building contents. Uh, a lot of the attention has been focused on the hospital equipment in particular because of the need to keep hospitals operational uh, following a, a major disaster like an earthquake. and. Uh, We've had a lot of experience with uh, what happens in uh, hospitals when things are not nailed down or properly attached to walls. Uh, and the disruption to the hospital function uh, has been documented uh, time and again. Uh, but outside of the hospital arena, it's clear that uh, failure of non-structural components can be a life hazard, uh, even in a traditional office setting. Again, going back to uh, Christchurch, this is a photo that I took in an office building that hadn't yet been cleaned up by the, uh, by the owners. Uh, you can see somebody's shoe left there. They were in such a great haste to get out of that space, and you can imagine why. Um, simple things like just nailing uh, bookshelves back to the wall. It doesn't take a lot to hold a bookshelf up 
uh, and prevent it from doing this uh, certainly uh, would fall under the uh, category of simple positive anchorage. Uh, 